नमस्कार ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ नेशनल रिसोर्स सेंटर श्रीराम कॉलेज ऑफ कॉमर्स आई एक्सटेंड माय हार्टेस्ट ग्रीटिंग्स टू वन एंड ऑल आई एम डॉक्टर मल्लिका कुमार एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर फॉर इकोनॉमिक्स एंड कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफिस ऑफ इंटरनेशनल प्रोग्राम्स श्रीराम कॉलेज ऑफ कॉमर्स यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली इट इज माई प्रिवलेज to share with you in brief about Eleanor Ostrom the first woman to receive Nobel prize in economics in 2009 until 2019 she was the only woman to receive Nobel prize in economics this year we have the second woman nobel laureate in economics esther duflo who received the nobel prize in economic sciences along with abhijit banerji and michael krumer in 2019 it is very interesting to know eleanor ostrom had formal education in political science and she received this prestigious prize in economics eleanor ostrom was born in los angeles california in the united states of america and grew up in a family of simple means she studied political science at university of california where she also received her phd in 1965 she later went on to work at indiana university in bloomington eleanor ostrom has also been affiliated with arizona state university she married fellow political scientist vincent ostrom in 1963 This lecture would focus on the what, why, how about Eleanor Ostrom and her work. Why did she receive the Nobel Prize and why did I choose her? What was her contribution? What were her proposed eight ways to solve the tragedy of commons and achieve successful management of common pool resources? And how we take her learning forward in our teaching and life? In brief, we will discuss about her life, intellectual journey, contribution and application. Why did she receive a Nobel Prize? Well, she was the first woman and only woman to receive the Nobel Prize in 2009 because of her unconventional views and unique take on traditional economics and focus on institutional diversity. her belief in the power of people individuals and groups her understanding and by example communicating that academic work like common resources can benefit from cooperation and that has also been my area of research that is cooperatives so what was her contribution eleanor ostrom won the nobel prize with oliver willemson for her contribution in the analysis of economic governance especially the commons she challenged the conventional wisdom for the management of commons as you all must be aware commons is those resources particularly natural resources accessible to many users Common pool resources are a um, is a very general term to refer to a wide diversity of resources in the world, where it's hard to exclude people from them, but once they are in and if they use or harvest, what they harvest takes away from others. So an easy example is to think of a fishery. It's hard to get a boundary on a fishery, uh, so it's hard to exclude people. but uh if i take out a ton of fish a uh, ton of fish are not available to other fishermen well the public good and the common pool resource share the difficulty of exclusion um so uh, uh having peace and security in your neighborhood you can't exclude anyone from enjoying it 
but any one person does not subtract from peace and security. Um, so it's this difference between um, uh, sub subtractability or not. I'm not arguing that um, uh, centralization or privatization will sometimes work. Um, I'm arguing that they are not the only solutions of successful systems and that many times individuals come together and create a common property regime um, that uh, they understand but not necessarily others from the outside and that many common property regimes are also successful. It is hard to come with a, a common set of rules uh, that is negotiated um, person to person or through uh, various ways at a global level. Of, um, but we can be working on local rules that work very well. If we keep our current theories, no. So um, uh, a good deal of our academic work has me very discouraged. Uh, if we can slowly but surely change the way we think about these problems, uh, uh, I think there are ways of doing um, much better multi-level thinking uh, and uh, understanding the diversity and the complexity and not rejecting it. So yes, I think there's a good chance, but if we stay with our current uh, narrow ways of thinking about the world, no, I'm very discouraged. Traditional economists believed if left uncontrolled or ungoverned, resources would be exploited and overused by the local communities, leading to an unsustainable consumption pattern. The idea stems from the article Tragedy of the Commons, written by Garrett Hardin, and had since been used to understand human behavior, leading to a belief that resources should either be privately owned or controlled by the government. Well, Manser, no, sorry, not Manser, uh, uh, he came later. Uh, Garrett Hardin wrote a uh, very stirring article in 1968 published in Science. And he imagined a pasture open to all and posited that if that were the case, then everyone would bring their animals on and they would keep bringing more and more and more and they would eventually overuse the commons. What he went on to say was that, that they were trapped and could not themselves get out of it. And what our theory, theoretical work and empirical work has shown is that in many instances, but not all, people have found ways of agreeing on their own rules and extracting themselves from the problem. This is the, this concept of polycentricity, of enabling both market and government, governments at multiple scales to interact with community organization so that we have a complex nested system. And it ain't pretty in the sense that it's nice and neat. And many people have tried to get rid of creative solutions that are complex. But society is complex, people are complex, and for us to have simple solutions to complex problems, not a good idea. If the community at play were only the entire planet, and we simply wait until the big guys make a decision, we're in deep trouble. Uh, our theoretical work on polycentricity here is very relevant in that uh, while uh, in any greenhouse gas emission does have a global effect, it may also have, and usually does, local and regional effects. 
Uh, so we need to be thinking about how to enhance the ways of organizing around the local and regional so as to produce uh, more externalities that are positive at the global. Well, a great number of the policies laid down. Uh, let's take the policies for Eastern Africa related to the pasture area that the Maasai occupied. The Maasai had been there for centuries and had figured out a way of grazing over a great distance so that in an area where the rainfall was limited and spotty, uh, they were able to uh, maintain that rangeland in a, a, a very good form. It didn't look pretty because that's the way it was, but if you if you um, graze down too far and then you let uh, some other things come up and don't graze in an area and you get uh, big bushes, then you end up with ruining the functioning of it. Well, uh, when the uh, Brits came in, they gave half of it, well, should, uh, not half, they gave a very large segment away uh, to um, uh, colonial farmers and to set up a big reserve. Uh, the the uh, Kenyan government in the 1950s onward uh, kept giving away, giving away, giving away. They finally created group ranches, but the group ranches weren't large enough to really enable them to maintain the kind of system that um, worked. They then have been privatizing themselves, the, the Maasai, their land, um, so it would not be given away again by the government and working out arrangements so that family and friends can share and they're recreating the movement of the cattle around. And Esther Mwangi has done a wonderful job of studying this over time and um, they may, the local people may again find a way of coping with a very difficult and challenging environment. disapproved this idea by conducting field studies on how people in small local communities manage shared resources such as pastures, fishing waters and forests. She showed that when natural resources are jointly used by their users, in time rules are established for how these are going to be cared for and used in a way that is both economically and ecologically sustainable. In her research, Eleanor Ostrom applied rational choice theory and insights from development economics to ecological preservations. Ostrom modified the theory of collective action originally given by Manka Olson in 1965. Olson's theory argued that a group providing a public good to its members will not be able to do it efficiently owing to the problem of free riders, wherein an individual receives the benefit despite the lack of contribution, exploiting the efforts of others. Eleanor Ostrom advocated that norm-based human behavior better explains the collective action theory and people who follow the rules created by them would be able to efficiently provide the public goods to the group. Eleanor Ostrom performed extensive research in the areas of collective actions by commons. Based on her work, she developed eight principles to achieve successful management of common pool resources. The principles are clearly defined boundaries, proportional equivalence between benefits and cost, collective choice arrangements, monitoring, graduated sanctions, conflict resolution mechanism, minimal recognition of rights to organize, and coordination between the relevant groups which are a part of a big social group. Eleanor Ostrom's work involved a link between theory and experiments. Her field work and use of case studies covered every continent. In her book, Governing the Commons, she draws on studies of irrigation system in Spain and Nepal, 
mountain villages in Switzerland and Japan, and fisheries in Maine and Indonesia. The experiments conducted by Ostrom contributed towards the support of experimental design in studying the social dilemmas. The application of common pool resource principle is wide-ranging, expanding to even the governance of space exploration. The region where satellites orbit the Earth is considered a global common place, and Johnson, Fries, and Whedon in their article highlight the shortcomings of current regimes in governing the outer space activities and recommend that Ostrom's principle of common pool resources would be beneficial in monitoring the status of space commons and adherence to rules created among the various space actors by themselves. Common pool resource principles have been applied in various structures, whether be schools or local neighborhood. A case study conducted in the neighborhood of Buffalo, New York provides support to the use of these principles in mitigating the problem of commons. These areas were affected by problems of uh, deteriorating housing stock and influx of drug dealers. To tackle this problem, Westside Community Collaborative was formed where local residents took upon themselves to help clean vacant lots, put in gardens, identify housing violations, and working directly with the inspectors. Acting together, the members of the neighborhood were able to reverse the problem faced by the commons. Principles derived by Ostrom and her associates for common pool resource groups are wide enough in scope to be generalized and applied in various kinds of groups. So now the question is, what do we take? What do we learn from her research? How do we take her learnings forward in our teachings and life? My choice for this lecture on Eleanor Ostrom is not just because of the what of her work. That is, what is the work she did? what are the problems she adhered to, but more intensely because of the how of it. Ostrom suggested that far from a tragedy, the commons can be managed from the bottom up for a shared prosperity given the right institutions. In Paul Krugman's words for this award to Eleanor Ostrom, it is an award for institutional economics. If the goal is to understand the creation of economic institutions, it is crucial to be aware that there is more variety in institution, a wider range of strategies that work than simply the binary divide between individuals and firms. That conclusion suggests that yes, markets can organize production and consumption efficiently, but only when they have the support of networks and that of the communities. In today's world of challenges, from climate to loneliness, where ecological realities increasingly threaten material prosperity, Eleanor Ostrom's work provides a way of thinking about some thoughts some food for thoughts for us to share even with our students are how emphasis on local solutions to climate change are relevant to a crisis propelled by global factors, how a polycentric approach can help us to cope with climate issues, how truly sustainable development can be created by humanity, how individuals, peoples and groups provide solutions. Eleanor Ostrom was a political scientist who earned her BA, MA, PhD in all political science. So thus she never had much of formal training in economics. Her educational background could very well be the reason of her unconventional views. She worked with a whole range of social scientists uh, from foresters, ecologists, mathematicians and so many others. 
and from each discipline she learned and offered conceptual framework to address important practical problems of resource management. So as it has been mentioned earlier, you know, she believed in the power of individuals and groups and her contribution in the field has proven her to be an uncommon woman for the commons. In our life, particularly in our profession of teaching, teaching which I always say is not a job, it's not just a job, it is a vocation, a calling from God where we have an opportunity to connect with the youth. So this bottom-up approach can be, I'm sure many of the teachers are already doing it, but we can do it all the more to make it, the make learning uh, not just uh, a delivery of knowledge, but also creation of knowledge. And when we involve the students in the uh, discussion of the problems, taking ideas from them for the solutions, then teaching becomes more effective, teaching as well as learning becomes more effective. So it's very important for us to share the work of such eminent scholars with our students who were not just scholars but also very good human beings. It's such a pleasure to know about what she was as a person and how she shared her uh, knowledge and everything with others. She was an open-minded individual with respect for different opinions and exceptionally generous, known for her remarkable energy and appetite for work, her down-to-earth manner and her strong loyalty to students and colleagues. She communicated the idea that academic work, like the common resource, can benefit from cooperation. And my area of research has also been cooperatives, where I uh, uh, focused on case studies in the area of Uttarakhand and interacted with people uh, at various levels from local, district, regional, state and national and could realize the power of working together. In summary, Eleanor Ostrom's belief that ordinary people have a large body of common sense was grounded in her scholarly research. Her legacy will continue to have enormous practical, political and ethical implication for policies uh, in different fields like public health, climate change, environmental resilience, population growth and other pressing issues of the 21st century. In today's world, Everybody faces challenges. If there is life, there are going to be challenges. The important thing is not what are the challenges, but also how do we tackle them. So the takeaway from this lecture, uh, as has also been mentioned in Omar Haik's uh, um, reading, what we do is often a function of how we do it. And that's what institutional economics is really about. It's awesomely fitting that a Nobel for studying it went to someone who did it. Someone who challenged not just the what, but also the how. It is often easy to challenge the what, yet challenging the how is where deep change begins. So the lesson that we get from her uh, uh, work is that challenges are going to be there. In fact, I remember one of the quotes that challenges make life interesting, overcoming them makes it meaningful and what matters is how we overcome them. Individually, each one of us has a lot of power within ourselves. Each one of us is unique and but equally important is to realize the power of togetherness. Regarding the challenges at the global level, I conclude with Eleanor Austin's words. Part of the solution to many of the world's key problems lies at the local level. And people together can solve them better. Thank you for your patient hearing. It's been a privilege, a pleasure to e-connect with you. 
We hope to stay in touch. The e-content for this lecture includes a PowerPoint presentation, the links and uh, a file which includes various concepts that have been uh, included in this brief lecture which can be shared with the students. Thank you once again. Good luck and God bless.